Come and experience the People's Park the way it was 50 years ago in May of 1969. Rare footage of the joy and love of the creators of this very famous Berkeley Park. The park started Sunday, April 20th, where a thousand people gathered tools and donated plants and gathered at the 2.8 acre plot in Berkeley. They began their construction and their planting. Three weeks later, I took my camera to see what was going on there, and I was fortunate enough to capture in its full glory the spirit and energy of this park reflect upon the sudden loss of the People's Park and what it meant to the Berkeley community. There's no way to exaggerate what the Berkeley community has lost. Now you will know why it has not been forgotten.
say you have no love to spare. I tell you love is like the air. Why must you keep your love so rare when it's around? ended five days later on May 15th when the governor of California, Governor Ronald Reagan, went against the chancellor and put up a fence. He brought in the Berkeley police, which he had control of. He brought in the highway patrolmen, which he had control of. Came in at 4 a.m. in a surprise raid and destroyed, physically destroyed, everything in the park on that day. If anybody doubts the energy and enthusiasm and love for this project, the People's Park of Berkeley, California, you just have to look at the reaction after the fence went up around the park. For weeks and weeks, maybe even months, there was protest. I wish to describe the history of Berkeley People's Park, and these are taken from Wikipedia, which is a, a wonderful resource for the full story of People's Park. I mean, the story is a fascinating story. It really started a year before this film, February 1968, when the University of California had bulldozed a whole series of beautiful old brown shingle homes 
because the property was owned by the university and they wanted to create student housing just four blocks from the campus. This property remained an undeveloped eyesore for a whole year and it totally annoyed much of the Berkeley populace. April 13, 1969, a meeting was held by merchants and residents to decide on an action plan to build People's Park. One week later, the action plan appeared in the Berkeley Barb Weekly, and two days after that, this plan brought out a huge gathering in front of Sproul Plaza, who gathered with shovels and tools to descend upon the vacant land, the official starting of the park. About 1,000 to 3,000 people participated in the park construction over the next three weeks. Ten days later, the vice chancellor of UC Berkeley released the university plans for student dormitories on the property. And then a week after that, the Chancellor Hines of the university met with representatives from People's Park and told them there would not be any surprise action by the university. A week later, May 10th and 11th, this film captured the energy, love, and enthusiasm of the new and growing People's Park. It shall be cherished for eternity. Three days later, Chancellor Hines' press release said they had begun construction of fencing to enclose People's Park. Two days after that, Governor Reagan, who was very unhappy with Chancellor Hines because he was thought to be too lenient with the students, ordered a 430 secret raid on the park with 250 highway patrol and university police under his authority. They installed an eight-foot fence and destroyed what had been People's Park. This immediately prompted a crowd of 3,000 people to gather at Sproul Plaza and thus to begin a period to be called Bloody Thursday, the most violent confrontation in the history of UC Berkeley. Large protests and marches continued on a daily basis week after week for months. On Bloody Thursday, James Rector was killed by buckshot from police guns and Alan Carpenter likewise was permanently blinded by buckshot from the police. Totally unnecessary. May 30th, 1969, 30,000 people with permits marched peacefully past the fenced off park. A couple months later in September of that year, city council voted to lease the park site from the university. The Berkeley community would rebuild the park mainly with donated labor and materials. Various local groups contributed to manage the park during rebuilding. This apparently was only rebuilding a part of the land of the 2.8 acres because it is clear that this park would never rise to its former glory. The saga continues forever, but it's worth saying that in May 1972, an enraged crowd tore down the chain link fence around the People's Park site. Why did they do that? Why did they storm the fence? President Nixon ticked them off when he announced his intention to mine the Vietnam's main port and harbor. Berkeley has its own ways. <laughs> For several years, I have been taking my camera to uh, the Bay Area to document various scenes. I had heard of the controversial land called People's Park, but never seen it personally before until May 10th. I took my 8mm Bolex camera to the park where I witnessed throngs of joyous people having a great celebration. I started filming these scenes immediately equipped with a French made zoom lens. The camera was great for close ups. Well for those who don't know about an 8mm camera, they're kind of a pain in the neck. Each roll of 4 minute film cost $4 including development. And you had to put the film in the camera and get it started so that there was no light streets on it. And then at the end of two minutes, you had to take the film out and try to keep it as sheltered and shady as you could with a jacket or whatever you could. Turn the film over and get two more minutes. And then you never knew when good film was available. So there's a lot of art. And then, of course, there was no sound there was no digital technology in existence. But we have the pictures 50 years later. I should say the digital world helped out enormously when the 40-year-old film was converted to DVD format. And that's how we can show this in good quality. 
the film actually showed better quality in DVD than it did in the original 8mm projectors that they were designed to be used with. Film in those days did not last forever, so this film is now preserved in the Bancroft Library of Berkeley, California, in a specially hermetically safe environment so that it will last longer than the DVD's format. <laughs>